This video is sponsored by Skillshare. How do you guys? It's Luke at Geek Gaming Scenics. This video has been put on hold for a long time because filming yourself, filming yourself is very hard. Now I have a editor and a cameraman, which is Josh from the Pickle Jar. So I'm able to do this video and I don't actually shoot videos this way anymore because I've got a camera operator. So I thought I'd document, help out all the people that have been asking me. Plus if there's any of you that are actually interested in what goes into video making, this video is going to have it for you. So let's get cracking. 99% of my filming is always on just one camera. And the reason I do this is so it's quicker and a little bit easier to edit because everything's in order on that SSD or memory card. And what I do is I capture a wide shot to open up the scene to show what I'm doing. It's a little box of models from the Star Wars line. So I show a wide shot to show you where I am and what I'm doing. Then after I've captured that, I then move the camera, I reframe, and then I go over to open the box. But then as soon as I've sat down and opened the box, I then move the camera again, reframe, refocus, pull out the contents, and then stop, move the camera, <laughs> and carry on doing this till I've created a load of little three second, five second, 10 second clips of me getting the models out of the box. The reason I do this is for engagement. It looks a lot more interesting than just one fixed off lock shot of what you're doing. And I build that up with wide, medium and tight shots to sort of show what I'm doing in the environment that I'm doing to medium when it's important and then super tight when I'm trying to show you what I'm actually doing. So this means changing lenses. This means getting in there close and showing an, an in-depth look at what I'm doing. And once you get them shots, what I also like to try and do is a little bit of movement in them shots. Now, when you're filming by yourself, this is quite complicated. How I do it is I get a little bit of string, I fasten it to the handle of the tripod, and while I'm clipping the models off the sprue or painting a model or I'm building a model kit, what I do then is I pull my leg tight on the string and then that turns the fluid head of the tripod to give you a proper motion. I'm not a fan of cropping in in post and putting a, a digital motion in because you lose that parallax effect and I just like to have proper motion on the camera and this is how I do it without any expensive equipment but it works so why not use it and then to finish off I just get some handheld footage of what I've created at that point to then move on to the next step so then all I'm doing now is literally just clipping out all the sections of me walking to and from the camera over and over and over again and only showing you the bits that I want to show you so it looks like I've been sat there doing it all in one process. This does seem a lot long-winded but it's how you do it. And then I colour correct and colour grade it to put all the colour and everything back in to make it look nice and pleasing. This is what that pan looks like with a bit of string around the tripod. I think it looks quite nice. And I just applied this process to an entire video. So all my videos are built up with three, four, five, ten second clips to tell, take you on a story of me enjoying the hobby and what I'm doing, or teaching you even. Now for rigging cameras for miniature painting, which is a little bit more complicated. So my painting setup is very, very simple. And the reason I keep it simple is painting on camera is horrendously difficult and that's why I, I have a camera that shoots 4k however you don't need a camera that shoots 4k i managed for a very long time with the c100 on the same arm um, you just have to use tighter lenses that's all so there's a little less in focus but other than that it's fine but you keep it simple get that camera to your eye level so the people who are watching your videos can see exactly how you're painting and I keep it like that, so I literally get the shots that I want, and as soon as I've finished getting the shots that I want, I take the camera down, and then I carry on with something else, and I get wides to break up the painting shots. That's it. Um, I'm not the flashiest miniature painter, so I don't have to capture that much footage. So if you are enjoying this video, this is more of an overview of how I shoot and film things. If you really want to get into the nitty gritty, 
a perfect platform for you will be Skillshare. I view Skillshare because I, I actually get to look at my favorite YouTubers and they tutor you how to make better videos. So my favorite is YouTube Success by Marcus Brownlee, teaching how to shoot, script, and edit all in one platform. Now, if you're not just into video making and you, you are watching this just out of sheer interest, there's absolutely tons of different artists on there. One of my favorite creators on Skillshare is Jennifer Kelly's Color Quest, teaching you how to mix any color you want with acrylics. It's great for learning color theories and everything else. But it's in a plethora of people to learn off that you look up to on YouTube, but it's just going down to that nitty gritty and teaching you how to do it in far more depth, far better than any YouTube video would. So if this sounds interesting to you, don't forget to check out the links below and the first thousand people to use that link get one month free, which is absolutely amazing. So I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video and helping content creators like us and maybe even help you out a lot as well. So back to the video. So for lighting in this room, what I'm using is three Godox SL60s. What they are is a continuous uh, video light, um, which is 60 watts. So they're quite low powered, um, but more than enough for a lot of what we do. And how I have all them positioned is I have one that's directly above my painting desk, which is a, a, a vertical down. And uh, that's got a, just a square soft box on going through two layers of diffusion and into a grid. All the grid is for is so that there's no spill of light, it's just literally on the desk and nowhere else, okay? Then I have this one behind me, which acts as a kicker light, so when you see in the talking head, it leaves a bit of a, a rim and a, a bit of fill on the side of my face, but that's mainly for when I'm painting at the desk or I'm building a diorama or anything, there's light hitting it from that side as well. And the main big light is that one there, if I can get it all in shot, so it's an SL60 in a six foot soft box uh, with two layers of diffusion and a grid. And the reason I use grids is because I don't want spill on any of the other walls in the, in the room, just where I want it in this area. So it looks a little bit more moody. I'm not into that full bright YouTuber look. Um, but if you wanted a really bright open look to the room, all you do is take the grids off and you'd have a nice soft diffused, big bright room. Um, but that's how I like to, light things and that's what I'm using. All the links to all the lights and uh, modifiers and everything else will be in the links below if you're wanting to get yourself some. Uh, one thing I would like to say about a lighting stand is I use these from Pilot R. Um, they're about 35 or they used to be 35 pound. I don't know how much they are now. I'll put them in links below, but they're great for getting all your lights off the floor. Uh, and I have them even in a small space it's just so I've got no lighting stands, all the cables are up onto the ceiling and everything else. The only one that is on the lighting stand is this one because it's up on a shelf out the way. And literally that's all I do for lighting. I don't like moving the light. I try and keep it so it looks like it's coming from a window. And I try and keep the room as natural looking as possible. Uh, it's just a, that's a stylistic choice, but I don't like moving the light to light other parts of the room. And being in a big white room, it softly diffuses all around the room anyway. And that's what I like. I just keep, keep the light as motivated as I can do by not moving it. And then I just use the lighting in the space that I've got. So before Godox actually sent me this SL300 uh, 2, getting shots of miniatures and getting all the miniature in focus was near on impossible. What I was having to do is film, say the hand of the model and sort of like do a focus pull to sort of show you the model coming in and out of focus. Or I'd have to take a picture and focus stack and then it's not actually a video, it's just a panning picture and it doesn't look as nice. But now I've got the SL300, I can actually film a miniature up very close, get it to fill the frame and get all the model in focus. And the amount of light you need to do that is an awful lot. I've not used this above 60% yet, so a Godox 200 might be enough, but this Godox 300 means that when I'm doing gaming tables or anything like that, it's more than enough for me. And if you are thinking about doing YouTube and doing miniature thing, so make sure you get a light with a decent amount of wallop. So like 200, 300 watts, 
They are about four to five hundred pounds these, but seriously guys, if you invest in a good light, it just helps so much when you're making miniature videos. So thanks Godox for sending this out, it's appreciated. The camera that I use is a Canon C100. Um, the Canon C100 is, a, is an old boy now, it's about what, 10 years old? But it's a professional cinema camera. Now, the reason I own two of these, I mean, this one's a bit beat up uh, because it's been dropped and everything, um, but is the design uh, for the weatherproof. So when I'm working on terrain, there's a lot of dust around. There's, it, they, they get caked in modeling compound. So being weatherproof means that they're gonna take some hammer on that side of things. The other reason is they're a video camera. So they're, they're kitted up for doing broadcasting. So if I do live streams, I can have a full clean HDMI out and just run them into capture cards and do live streams with two cameras. The battery life on these cameras take block batteries that last up to six hours. Um, if I have two 64 gigabyte cards in the camera, that gives me about, what, 10 hours of record time. But the main reason that I bought this camera is at the time I had to make a choice. Do I buy a camera or do I buy a computer? This camera records to 4K sensor, but it downsamples it in camera to 1080p, meaning it gives you the most beautiful 1080p image that you can see. But it's not hard on your computer to edit. So I didn't have to upgrade my computer, which when people are talking about cameras and a lot of entry level cameras, the codec that them cameras recording, a lot of laptops and a lot of computers do struggle recording these low bitrate 4K 1080p files. Whereas this camera, you can edit it on a seriously old computer and it's just buttery smooth. So that's the main reason I use this camera. And one last thing is the fact you've got two screw mounting points. And I know that seems quite like a little thing, but if you've got a camera on a tripod and you've only got one screw under there, when you're moving it around a lot, it always comes loose. If you've got two pins in the bottom, it can't come loose. And that is another good reason why I chose this camera. And the other good reason about this camera is it's as affordable as an entry-level modern camera. You can pick these up from about 500 pounds to 750 pounds now. Absolute bargain. So when it comes to lenses, guys, you don't have to spend an absolute fortune. When I started, I bought a good all-round zoom, which is a 17 to 55 f 2.8. It's a constant aperture, meaning the light doesn't change when you zoom it in, okay? I used that for a very long time. And then after that, I wanted to use primes. The reason I want to use prime lenses is usually they're a lot faster, meaning they let a lot more light in, so you don't need as much light and also they give you a lot better blurrier background and they're a lot more arty. How I found out what lens focal length I wanted, I bought cheap prime lenses like a Helios, an M42 mount Helios and then I bought a very cheap two, three pound adapter to the screw on the back of that to the camera. And that's like a 50 mil and they cost about 20 pounds, uh, up to about 50 depending on condition. And I learned to use vintage primes, which help you with focusing and everything else. And I still use vintage lenses today because they give you a better look. However, once I had a favorite focal length, like I love 50 mil and I love 100 mil, I then invested in some high-end glass, which I got Sigma Art 50 f 1.4, which is about 500 pounds. And I got the, this lens is absolutely gorgeous. This is the Canon, uh, L Macro f2.8 and we use this an awful lot um, just because it's just razor sharp you can get so close to models uh, it's, it's the perfect macro lens for doing quite a lot of stuff that we do realistically you want a lens that's around 24 mil for filming yourself or uh, a 50 and a 100 mil and that's more or less what I use all the time so that's lenses and cameras Let's talk about the stuff that's really important that I think you guys should invest in. If you're buying your first DSLR or mirrorless little camera, the one thing that you should invest in is a good pair of sticks and a good fluid head. In other words, a tripod. Do not, do not skimp out on this. 
I've dropped cameras and everything else. If you're spending, even if you're buying a cheap camera around 150, 200 pounds, then you're putting an 150 pound, 200 pound lens on that. Don't rely on a cheap tripod. Tripods have more use than just holding a camera. You can do pans, you can do all sorts of camera movements on there. Just spend a little bit extra money on a decent pair of sticks and a fluid head. You can pick a decent branded tripod up from about 60 to 120 pounds. I know that might sound a bit expensive to people, but seriously guys, if you put in your camera on a tripod, don't spend a couple hundred quid on a camera and then stick it on a piece of plastic crap. Get yourself a good tripod and it'll improve your videos tenfold just because of the fluid head motions and all the other stuff you can do with it. So with my tripod, um, it's, well, it's not really a tripod, it's called a pedestal stand. The reason I've gone for this is, as you know how I shoot, I got very, very sick of changing all three legs all the time. It got a bit much and it added quite a lot of time. I ended up buying a pedestal stand because it's just a one, you just need one hand to operate the screw on the, on the center bar and the center column, and you can use the handle to get the camera to where you want and lock it off. That's it. You're not having to undo all three legs, move it into position, lock all three legs up. And when you've got a heavy camera on there, it's quite awkward and it slows you down. Whereas with my setup, it's never going to fall over. It's a single hand operation and I've got a very good fluid head on there, which is the Manfro 0502. So the, if you're interested in the dolly, they're about 500 pounds, um, but the, it's a Hague, I think it's called a P2 Pro dolly, could be wrong. <laughs> and then the, the fluid head that I'm using attached to that is the Manfro 0502 fluid head, which is a proper dedicated video head. And the reason I have that one is my camera's quite heavy, um, so it, takes the weight and I can do all the smooth pans and everything as you saw at the beginning of this video. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'd like to thank Skillshare for making this video possible. I would like to add guys that I've put doing this video off is because filming yourself, filming yourself is a very difficult process and I've only been able to show you how I do it because now I have a full-time cameraman and editor and that person is Josh from The Pickle Jar. You wanna come and say hello? Hi guys, I'm Josh and uh, yeah, I'm Luke's new cameraman and editor. You might have seen me in a couple of videos already, but you'll be seeing a lot more of me going forward because for my sins, I've decided to come and work here for Luke. Uh, but yes, thank you for checking out the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to help support us, all the links down below are for Geek Gaming Scenics. Check out the store or check out your local independent store and help support them, which helps support us as well. But thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking us out and we'll catch you in the next one. Love, love, love. And please, 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 you know, use this product because paying for it's expensive. And that's why we need sponsors. So thank you, Skillshare.